Yes, folks, summer is finally upon us, so it's time to get the classic cars recommissioned. Now I'm going to talk you through what I do to do just that job. Job number one, give it a belt of a sponge. Clean car is always a good starting point when you're doing this job. Next thing we're going to do is a full function test of all the electrics in the car. So, turn the car on. You can hear the fuel pump clicking away there. And, okay. So now, fuel gauge working, temperature gauge is working, oil pressure gauge is working. I know the temperature gauge and oil pressure gauges in this aren't electric, but uh, you get the point. So next thing we're going to try is our horn. It's working. Indicators. No. We've got a wonky switch there, okay? So, right. This stuff goes a long way. WD-40 contact cleaner. There are other brands available and some of them are better than this as well. But this is the one I have, so we're going to spray it in here and I'm just going to Cycle the switch a few times. And see how ready you're working. So now that's, uh, that's that problem fixed. We can also check our full beams. The indicator light is working. Now you can do this in the garage and you'll be able to at least see the lights a little bit easier. We'll try our blower fan. working such as it is never particularly great in this car but interior lights working heated rear window probably not so let's uh, let's just go through everything else and if it's not working first thing you do is try a bit of contact cleaner you might have a bulb that uh, is blown and now is the time to fix it and also if the bulb isn't blown you can clean the contacts in it you can start with this and if this doesn't work you might want to try a little bit of emery paper or something like that just to clean the contacts and if you have some dielectric grease to put on the contacts afterwards to stop them corroding again, so much the better. So uh, yeah, uh, they say Lucas, uh, i.e. the company that makes the electrics in this car, it stands for loose unsoldered connections and splices. So uh, there's an element of truth to that. They can be a bit uh, troublesome at times, but if you keep on top of the maintenance and make sure that everything stays as it should be, it'll work and it'll be all right. You can see our tail lights are working, number plate lights, they're all good. Same at the front. And don't forget folks, if you have an electric radiator fan, make sure you leave the engine long enough to warm up so that the radiator fan comes on so you know it's actually going to function when you get it out on the open road. Because that's been many the downfall of uh, people getting their cars out and realise it's overheating when they're stuck in traffic somewhere. Okay, so it's the following day for me now and I have the car in the garage and up on the ramp. Now obviously I know you don't all have ramps. But I do have one so it means that access is better underneath for me and I can show you around a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a full service on the car. We're going to change the oil, we're going to check all the fluids and we're going to set the uh, set the tappets as well on it. Now previous videos have shown me actually doing these jobs already so if you want to just look back on my previous videos that will probably be the best thing to do. This uh, video's focus is on actually recommissioning the car for the springtime. Okay, so the oil is draining away there now, so I'm going to get the front, front suspension greased up. Now, I know not every classic car has uh, grease nipples on the suspension, but this MGB does, so we're going to uh, grease them. There's six points in total on the front suspension, uh, three on this side, uh, on the kingpin, and three on the other side, obviously, as well. Then, in this instance, I actually also have uh, grease nipples on the top of the... Uh, the uh, track rod ends but I'm not going to do them because to be honest with you they should be absolutely fine after only 2,000 miles and you can over grease things as well but I will do those uh, I will do those points there as well and there is a grease, a grease nipple on the handbrake cable as well so we're going to give that a couple of shots of grease get that all done up and then what I want to do is I want to find out where that oil leak is coming from because the bottom of the car is destroyed with oil I know 
MGs are te they tend to be prone to oil leaks, but this is a bit on the excessive side of things. So let's see if we can get to the bottom of that. I have my suspicions. We're just using the general multi-purpose grease here. You don't need to do anything, use anything fancy. And just uh, make sure you wipe up any excess grease that, uh, that comes out as well so uh, you don't end up getting uh, grease, uh, grease on your brakes because that would be a bad time. Okay, so that's the greasing done and uh, I've got uh, the six points on the front suspension. I'm just going to do the handbrake uh, cable there now and then we'll just uh, do a final check over everything and see if we can find that oil leak as well. There are actually three grease nipples on the drive shaft as well, so uh, that wouldn't be unusual to see in a classic car now. So uh, gave them a shot of grease there as well. So that's uh, that's all good. Now my suspicion on the oil leak is actually from the oil drain pan here on the uh, on the gearbox. Uh, there's uh, there's a little filter screen in behind there, so we're going to just throw a throw a socket on this and see if these are loose. Well, they're definitely taking a little bit of a turn anyway. That's oh yeah, they are. Now you don't need to stitch them, but you want to at least have them tight, and these are not tight. Yes, yeah, so I'd say that's, that's where our problem lay. So hopefully that'll solve that problem. What I'll do is I'll just give everything a spray down with some brake cleaner underneath here as well, just to get some of the uh, oily crap off it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that should be... Uh, that should be that. Now, what I am going to do as a result of that is I'm going to check the gearbox oil level as well and just top that off. It's fairly easy to do. The plug on the side of the gearbox here, undo that, and basically it's filled to spill. So you just uh, you fill it up until it starts spilling over, and uh, that uh, that's as much as it takes. 20W50 oil is actually what you want to use there. Same as the engine oil. Now, just a suggestion, folks. If you are going to be draining the gearbox oil, Make sure that you open the fill plug first because the worst thing to happen would be for you to uh, find that uh, the, drain, the fill plug won't come out after, your drain, after you've drained the oil and then you're completely banjaxed and you've got no oil in the gearbox. So uh, best thing to do, just uh, take that out first and then you can, uh, you can do the, uh, the drain plug. Now, it, you, one, of the, one of the big uh, telltales of a gearbox is low on oil and an MGB with an overdrive is that the overdrive won't engage. So, uh, there's a bit of oil in there though, and it's actually, oh god, gearbox oil smells disgusting. Um, it's not bad actually, I might, uh, I might not even need to top that up. You can kind of use your finger as a dipstick. Ah, it's full to the brim, don't need to top that up at all. Uh, you know, a, a mess like this under the car can actually look an awful lot worse than it really is. So, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll Leave, leave well enough alone there. Just give, uh, give a little bit of wipe underneath here. Great thing about the constant loss lubrication system that's on an MGB is that you're never going to have corrosion around where the oil is leaking. <laughs> It'll corrode everywhere else, but it won't corrode there. <laughs> they used to rust on the brochure, these cars. Right, okay, so that's that done. Um, and hopefully that's the oil leak sorted out. I had the uh, I had the strainer plate off before because uh, I was trying to get the overdrive working in this car. When I bought it, it didn't work. So uh, just as a kind of a process of elimination, I uh, I checked it, checked and cleaned the screen. Actually replaced the screen, so uh, it wasn't actually that bad. But still, and all, uh, the trust spanner on that uh, drain plug and the overdrive unit as well. While I'm under the car, I reckon it's a uh, sensible practice to. Just check the uh, level in the rear axle as well. I can tell you straight away that's full. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Smell like gack, but that's what they all, they all smell like. So, pop that back in. Okay, that's, uh, that's all our fluids done under the car. Uh, obviously, we've to the oil, we've filled the oil up again. I mean, it's it's now empty, uh, so we're going to be doing that now in a minute. Um, we're going to just do a general inspection underneath the car, make sure that everything is the way it should be. Fuel lines, brake lines, corrosion, and unfortunately, there is corrosion on this car, but 
it's just going to have to be one of those things we'll do further down the line. The uh, the sills and rear arches need doing on it. And I will do it at some stage, but uh, for the moment I want to get a bit of enjoyment out of the car first. So, yeah, it'll it'll survive. It'll survive one or two more summers and then we'll get it done. So, we've all our greasing points done, all our fluids done. Uh, brake lines are looking fairly good. Uh, fuel lines up by the fuel pump. I actually changed them uh, only uh, recently, so they should be fine, but modern rubber being what it is, I do not trust it as far as I could throw it. So, let me just have a look at everything here. What you do is you, you bend the rubber hose and you look for cracks on it, and um, you should be able to easily bend it. It should be pliable, it should not be rigid. Um, if it's rigid, it's gonna crack because there's no pliability left in the rubber. So we need to do that. And then what we're gonna do is just throw a spanner on all of the fixings and fasteners on the suspension. Particularly in this instance because of the fact that I've actually had things disturbed uh, because I did all the polyurethane bushes front and rear on this car. So it's had to kind of the summer last year to have a shakedown. And now it's time to kind of just basically make sure that everything is still as it should be. I did actually find that the spring plates, uh, the U-bolts on the spring plates here on the rear were actually loose. So they definitely needed to be tightened up and that explains the wayward handling I was having. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's grand. Now you can also go and just uh, top up any uh, areas where there is no underseal or the underseal is missing. And uh, that's a job for another video. I'm not gonna do that now, but I will probably do that in the next couple of weeks. Just get that done. I'm actually looking at that Lanoguard stuff. It's supposed to be very good, so I might end up using that. But uh, yeah, so anyway, let's just uh, check everything over. Exhaust, the exhaust mounts, the uh, drive shaft, uh, brakes. Um, yeah, check your wheel bearings for play. Uh, basically general visual inspection, front to back, underneath the car. And if you if you can get hold of a ramp, so much the better. You know, if you can get, if you know somebody with a ramp, then fair enough. If not, jack the car up, get it on axle stands, get a car creeper, slide in underneath it, and uh, just get the dirt in your eyes and do it that way. I've had to do it myself many years as well, so I can completely empathise with anybody who still has to do it. Okay, so you might notice here I actually did top up some of the under seal just a little bit, just to kind of keep the corrosion at bay in some of the areas that are still all right because I want them to stay all right. The other thing I did was I replaced the anti-roll bar bushes, which was on my to-do list. So that's now done. So they're actually polyurethane, so they should last a bit longer than the rubber ones, which usually last about three weeks. So that's uh, that's fine. And checked everything else over. So yeah, so let's get it down off the ramp, get some oil into it and the uh, new filter, and we will start adjusting the tappets. Okay, so looking at the top side of the engine, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start by just checking our fluids, condition as well as levels, making sure that they're not absolutely manky. And that's our brake fluid, looking all right. And that's our clutch fluid here, there's hydraulic clutch in these. And plenty in that as well. So that's, uh, that's fine. And these are, I only did this last year, so there's like 3,000 miles on it since then. I mean, technically I don't need to change the oil now, but because of the fact that it had been sitting up for so long before I got my hands on it, it just seems like a sensible thing to do to uh, to change the oil. Um, now, a little trick I do is I write the uh, the date and the, the current mileage of the car on the top of the filter, so you have a record of when it was last done. We're just checking the level of oil in the dash pots as well. They need topping up. You can use um, engine oil for them. Yeah, we'll top them up. Fuel filter is over there, and we're gonna check not only our fuel filter, but all our hoses and everything as well, make sure that they're in good order. And then we'll have a look at our coolant level. Hmm, that looks like it could be low, so we'll, uh, we'll top that up as well. So first thing I wanna do before we kind of go topping up everything is I wanna actually do the tappets because the engine's stone cold, and if I start adding oil and everything like that, it's gonna make the job much more messy than it needs to be. So we'll pop off the uh, the rocket cover and we'll get that, uh, get that job done. I'll uh, stick a link down below for my previous video where I actually did the tappets, so I'm not gonna get into it in this detail. Basically, uh, I'll be using the rule of nine. So basically, uh, yeah, I, I, as, as I said, I can I explain all of that in the previous video. So right, I'll get stuck in there. Okay, I'm joined by my uh, my son here as well, who wanted to come out and see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna take off the, 
spark plug leads. Now you'll see I have, have them numbered with a page marker from a previous occasion. Um, I mark them like a dice, if you know what I mean. So that, that kind of uh, layout of the numbers. So we're gonna pull the plugs, which will allow us A, to inspect them and B, to uh, change them if necessary and C, to allow us to turn the engine over a lot easier because there'd be no compression. So, <laughs> all right, so I buzz those out and then we can turn the engine over and get our, uh, get our valves adjusted. So you can see here now I have the four spark plugs removed obviously and these are the two at the back and they're a nice tan colour which is kind of really what you want to see. Now if you go towards the front of the car they're a little bit darker and that would suggest to me that the front of the, two, the, front of the two carburetors is just a tiny bit in the rich side of things. But it's still pretty good to be honest with you, I'm probably not going to go adjusting it. Um, so uh, yeah, those spark plugs, I'll give them a little bit of a clean and I'll pop them back in. So anyway, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go on to the tappets and uh, basically uh, the rule of nine is, so number one here, uh, number one is all the way down. So subtract uh, one from nine is eight, that means eight can be adjusted. And number three is all the way down and number three from nine means six can be adjusted, okay? So uh, that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Six can be adjusted down as well. Now you have to make sure the valves are all the way down, but uh, I will, uh, I'll do that off camera now and we'll get the valves adjusted. They don't feel terrible so far anyway, but uh, it's definitely worth doing. So I had the spark plugs all nice and clean and ready to go and uh, go and install them. And of course I dropped one of them. And there was only one place it was going to end up, wasn't there? In the bloody oil pan underneath the car. Right, so I'll clean that one again. Okay, so I have checked the fuel lines, checked the air filters, all the fluids under the bonnet, top, uh, changed the oil, and uh, basically checked the air oil pressure is building when I spin over the engine. Uh, the auxiliary belt is absolutely fine. If you have a timing belt, you need to check that as well on your classic car, but this obviously doesn't, it has a chain. Um, coolant has been topped up and we are fairly good to go. I did the dash pots as well. Now there is one little job I want to do and that's to replace the choke cable on this. I'll do that off camera though anyway. But uh, other than that, we are pretty good to go for a start. Now I would suggest that you check your timing as well. If you have a timing light, just uh, give it the once over. I happen to know the timing is bang on in this car, but it is, it's definitely a worthwhile exercise to do it. After we've got the engine started and we know everything's 100% under here, last thing to do then is to check the tyre pressures and to stick the battery on charge overnight and get that all topped off and then the car is good to go. So uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to start her up now and see how it sounds. Should be pretty good. No choke. Sounds pretty good. Once she warms up it'll settle down now and it'll be idling nicely, but that sounds very good. It's a lot less ticky as well, it was uh, some of the valves definitely needed adjusting, so uh, it sounds, uh, sounds a lot smoother and happier there now. Okay, so happy days. The engine's ticking over lovely. I'm really looking forward to getting this car out for a spin. As I said, I'm just gonna check the tire pressures, make sure that's all right, just inspect the tires and everything, tighten up the valve, or the, sorry the uh, the wheel nuts make sure that they're all right get it out in the open road and give it a good burn and that is really what a car needs and if you have a classic car folks get out and use it especially if the sun is shining i can never understand this thing of people keeping their car their classic car sitting at home and driving something boring to go in and out of the shops or into work in just use it you know get it out there get a uh, hit the road and uh, enjoy it i hope you got a bit from this video folks and i will see you in a future video please do hit the subscribe button before you go and I will see you in a future video.